got a great tutorial for all of you today, folks. Not only are we going to be talking about a great community sew along project, but we're going to be covering the basic block, the old maid's puzzle. Are you ready? Let's get stitching. Well, well, welcome back everybody. My name is Rob Appel. I'm a quilt maker here at Stitch in Heaven and I'm super blessed to have all of you joining me here on YouTube. If you're not one of the 50,000 plus subscribers, please do so right now. Hit that little button and continue to join along for all of these wonderful tutorials we are presenting. And today's a really fun one. Uh, if you haven't already heard, I have been blessed to become one of the Benertex Fabrics fabric designers and I put out a collection that is just hitting the local quilt shops today. We have a ton of it here for you at Stitch in Heaven. It is called New Worlds. It's nine super fun fabrics in these cool geometric patterns. But one of the things I love doing in the world of quilting is just participating. And so today's block makes a wonderful quilt and or a great thing you can participate with. And all that information is going to be down in the description below takes place over on the Benertex website, but it is the Butterflies and Bows Quilting Challenge. Uh, it's a quilt along and there's a lot of great fun you can have with it. Some of the prizes have already gone by the wayside, but we're going to still make quilts and that's the most important part, right? So yes, I am doing the version two of the Old Maid's Puzzle, I believe it's called. And I thought this would be really fun. Uh, recently, I did like a chain piece block or a chain color block, and I really liked the way the colors played. So I have changed even the instructions slightly. So I'll try to walk you through them as we get started today. And I'm not even looking at the pattern at the moment because it's in digital format. I haven't printed it out. So we're going to dive right into my best memory of how the pattern goes. Make sure you're following that link over there on Benertex, right? So so we're really just dealing with two different size cuts today. We have three and a half inch squares and we also have uh, four inch squares here. And I'm sorry, I said two sizes, but we also have a large seven inch square. This is cut on the diagonal to form these two white parts right in there as half square triangles. So we're kind of saving that towards the end, but I do believe it's one of the first steps in the instructions. We're going to start by building the cool little four patch that has the half square triangles in them. So we're going to go ahead and save the three and a half inch squares. That's what we're building to as we get ready to make our half square triangles. And today's we're going to do that in the standard formula of we're going to draw a diagonal line on the back of the lighter fabric. I find that's easiest to read that way. So one of the things maybe if you're struggling with accuracy, maybe this tip will help a little bit. I'm using a chalk pencil that's a little bit thick because it doesn't break on the fabric. I love that. But therefore, I have to start just a little in from my corner so that when I mark my line, I'm giving a really nice center line. Now, on my sewing machine, I have recently added on the really cool seam tape, and this is working terrific, except for my blocks are bigger than my machine bed, and I haven't figured that part out yet. You probably know the answer. You figured it out. I think I need to get an extension table or something like that going, but that's a video for another day, folks. Right now, we're just going to go ahead and draw that diagonal line on the back side, and now I'm calling this kind of my lighter of my blues. I am following the color formula, but I did add a dark against my light blue as we were going. So this is going to be married up right sides together to the <laughs> right sides together, please, to the purple fabric you're using, right? And of course, you can use whatever fabrics you want, but I'm just using colors to match up. And now we're going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance on either side of that chalk line there. So I just bring it on over to the sewing machine and now you can see I can't see my tape. So I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something other than the tape here. So I'm just going to use this chalk line and of course you can chain piece. You'll need four of these for every block that you're making, but I'm just going to finish out today with you by making this one here by sewing on both sides of that drawn line with a quarter inch seam allowance. And once those have been drawn through, let me make sure my iron starts heating up while I give you the instructions. Always wise to use something like one of your rulers to protect your hands. We're going to cut now that drawn line, okay? And with something like this now, we're going to want to trim these down to three and a halves. So you might have a block lock, you might have a slotted trimmer. Slotted trimmer happens to be my favorite, but it's somewhere over there on the other side of the room. So let me show you how to do this the old fashioned way uh, by taking, and we're going to press these first to our darker fabric. 
So I'm just gonna hold that over, press that. And this is one of the things I love about my wool mat is I can kind of use that, the heat it holds through and everything in my advantage. So I'm just gonna let that set for a moment because the iron was a little bit cool. Okay, now we're gonna simply use our diagonal here and finding our 45 degree marker on our line. I'm setting that on that seam allowance I just made. And folks, we're going to be making a three and a half inch finish. So right there's my three and a half. I have fabric on the outer edges of that line, meaning it's long. I'm gonna trim and shave here on the front once, slide that out of the way, rotate it 180 degrees. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna really line up that three and a half and that three and a half down there on the corner. Now I'm gonna make sure that diagonal goes through there beautifully and we're gonna go ahead and finish the other one off. Let me show you that again in case you weren't paying attention. Diagonal line, making sure that you've got more than the, the size you needed. Right now more than the three and a half down there. I also like to cut from the middle of my ruler towards the end so I don't tip the end off there with my cutter. Okay, three and a half, three and a half. Got the plenty of extra. Cut and cut there. And then let me just go ahead and make sure my blade is safe. Okay, so that is how you're gonna make your half square triangles. If you have any of the other efficiency tools, those can be nice as well. Another thing we're gonna need to do within our four inch blocks um, that are raw, and these are of my lighter blue fabrics, is I'm gonna go ahead and take these now and I'm gonna cut these also on the diagonal. So this is for another portion of the project. This is for the portion that fills in right here and we'll start to look like this. And this is the cool thing, folks, and this is why I kind of jumped forward real quick to show you that the half square triangle that is used here and here is the exact same size and the exact same format of the half square triangle. So that's half square triangles used in both steps. Okay, so we just needed to make that so we can move forward. And you know what, while I'm slicing and dicing, let's go ahead and take right now and that big seven inch square, we're gonna go ahead and cut that down as well. Real easy, okay? Corner to corner, cutting through. Okay, now we can build out all of our units. This is super fun, okay? So let's go back to starting with our four patch here for our um, half square triangle units. Okay, and you can see that I've already started to build one just to kind of speed up that magic of television. So you will be sewing a three and a half inch square to the half square triangle that's been trimmed down to the three and a half inches. When you're first looking at these blocks, they're going tip by tip, okay? So that might be the easiest way is to line up your purple triangles tip to tip and then bring in those solid squares, okay? You can see that's what we've done there. And now all I need to do is make sure that I sew this seam allowance. But watch this, folks. This is one of the things I always like to do when I'm doing a lot of sewing, a lot of bulk sewing. So that's how it's gonna be. As I rotate these, I'm confirming that every single one of them is done the same way. So I can do a little bit more of a chain piecing or a bulk piecing formula. I'm gonna get in here with that quarter inch seam allowance. I'm just watching the edge right now as I go through. And now I wanna press over to the solid square, my heavier square. Okay, real easy. I'm just gonna hit this one now with the iron because we're gonna need it nice and pressed in a moment. And because I've been pressing these into that solid square, those solid squares are going on opposite sides of the four patch, which means that's gonna allow us to nest our seams together. Okay, so you're just gonna take one and you're gonna spin it around to make sure that the tips touch. Technically, folks, you could do this incorrectly and that's another neat looking block, but that's not what you're making today. Okay, so this is what you're doing right here. So make sure your tips touch, fold that over, look to nestle those seams, kind of wiggling them together nice. And then again, a quarter inch seam allowance. Utilizing the tape now is easy because I have the edge out there. And once it gets to pressing, if you want to be real accurate, like my friend Tiffany, of course you would press your seams open. I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I'm just going to press them to one side. But I will point out of this four patch unit, you need to make one and two of them, two of them for every block that we're building, right? Okay, so I'm going to set these two aside right now and quickly walk you through how to make kind of your 90 degree triangle block. 
So for me, looking at the instructions, looking at the ones I've already created, I'm going to be centering this purple square within a triangle. Right now it's sometimes a little hard because you've got all these different angles. So just look for your short sides. Okay, and your short sides come over here and form along this outer short side here or outer straight side, maybe I should say the same color straight side. Can you see that? And then now it's forming this big triangle. But these steps must be done in order. So I'm gonna take one of the sides and what I'm really matching up folks is not the tip, but this outside edge and this outside edge for a nice square piecing. Then I'm gonna come over here and I'm actually starting just a little ways up so I don't suck that corner down into my machine and quarter inch seam allowance all the way down along the side of that block. Real simple. But from here, just like if you're doing flying geese, you're gonna to wanna to press, and I like to press away from the center block for this. I'm not gonna take the time to trim that off yet. I'm bringing this right back here and along the same, or adjacent edges, but same concept, we're gonna line up this straight edge and this straight edge here. And so you see that that's gonna have that overlap that happens. I like sewing from up here on this top corner. It really is nice. Like patchwork is normal, folks. And right on through. And go ahead and press before you trim the bulk out of this corner. Very simply. Okay, right here. Now. Let's talk about accuracy and construction and all of that kind of stuff, because what I do have is a very consistent block, and this happens in all of my blocks. My points don't come all the way down here to touch. Once we marry these two parts together, we want this to finish at six and a half because these are at six and a half. And right now, this basically finishes perfect at six and a half. So I'm at a loss, folks. I don't know if I should tell you to trim this down so you only have a quarter of an inch from this tip to this edge, so you make sure that that tip's only showing, but then your triangles might come up short. I don't mind these floating around, but I do feel like I should point out it's not exactly the way it's supposed to be made and I don't have the solution necessarily. I guess if you were really, really concerned, you could make this triangle like a seven and a quarter so it was larger, trim this down, line them up, and then trim still down. But that sounds confusing. So what I'm gonna do is just keep on stitching, right? Just keep on sewing and let's go ahead and get both of these together right now so we can finish out our block. However, what I have found is I like the thicker the base unit, the Patrick base on the bottom. Even though there's all those seam allowances in there, I feel like it adds structure because this is now stitched on the bias. So as we come over in here, come into my seam allowance, and I've actually been using different seam allowances and different machines. So that could be part of what we're experiencing. We've all been told consistency really counts in our quilting. If I had flipped it over, I could be looking for those seam points, but I'll guarantee you that I wouldn't be hitting them most likely anyways. So before I panic about that one, I'm just going to grab this one. Like I said, they're all the same in my project, and I want to show you how cool the blocks look, and this is why we're making four of them. But in order to participate, you really only need to make one yourself. Oh, got going a little fast there. Pay attention to what we're doing. Okay, now that the thread's been cut off of these, because there's so much patchwork over here, I am gonna go ahead and, oh, hey, look, that one came out a lot better. I wasn't expecting that one. A little closer there. I think I cheated in a little bit more that time, but uh, nonetheless, I think that's what we're really looking for. These are the same size pieces I used yesterday, so now I'm terrified when I was prepping, so now I'm terrified to measure, because I do know it's supposed to be six and a half. I guess we could kind of look close enough, <laughs> close enough. These are considered half square triangles as well. If you wanted to use some sort of fancy trimming tool, uh, if you are, just make sure that you don't pull these points too far out of center. I did that slightly on one of my blocks as well. And I guess I should go back to rule 11, which is uh, not talking about all the mistakes that are potential in quilting because we're just supposed to be having fun anyways. Now I can use the same exact trick I was just showing you earlier to confirm that I'm getting my six and a half by six and a half. But you can see folks, I don't have much to spare. Pretty much just this top corner here, oops, here. And then if I rotate this around 180 degrees, 
Now that I'm down here on my bottom, six and a half corners, six and a half corner, line that up, square that up. I basically have just that one edge to shave. So the blue patchwork is actually spot on and that one turned out pretty sharp. Trim this down real quick so we can get the rest of our sewing together. Okay, now that that's trimmed down, let's build out that block unit all together. You can see here, like earlier with our purple triangles, it's easiest to make those white tips touch first. So we can bring those together like this. And then the key with these darker blocks that I was adding in was to make it so that the dark blocks kind of run through here. So just like we did in our earlier construction, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and fold it over and, um, Stitch two straight seams with that quarter inch seam allowance. And if you're staying organized, of course, you can do it in bulk by doing multiples at once. But I do find it really helps with your accuracy, your crispness of your patchwork, if you'll at least take the time to to press between steps. So we'll use your thread cutter here. And again, even though it's a lighter fabric, it's just easier on the sewing and the bulk and everything. I am pressing into the light fabric or into the less patchwork portion into the white triangle today. I guess rules are meant to be broken even in quilt making. So I'm glad that you were here with me to break the rules. <laughs> Stick with me, friends. I promise to break them often. Okay, and just make sure that we get this reorganized as we want it so that our white tips touch. Fold them over, but because like earlier as we pressed away, our seams are doing their nesting. And so that's going to help get that tip real nice and crisp. And the bigger the tips, the more you want to show that accuracy, I believe, because it's just more apparent. So as you're stitching through here, look for any of those adjacent seams that can grab points like we've been teaching you in some of the other videos. If you haven't seen it in any of our other videos, please make sure you're, like I said earlier, subscribed to the channel and checking out a bunch of our Learn to Sew series. I think they're fantastic. So we pull this out here. We're just gonna go ahead and press this. And now with four blocks, I can show you how cool this would be as a quilt if you just did these over and over again. And I don't think it would be a terrible design if you actually made these white squares the same dark purple fabric. I think it would be very unique as well, very cool looking. But so when you put these together like this, notice you're gonna get these really cool arrow shapes forming. So technically, you can build it in here and you're gonna get all of these super cool designs within a design. Maybe that's where the old maid's puzzle conversation comes from. So this is a very dynamic looking block. These are gonna finish at 12 and a half inches raw, 12 in the project. But so you can see it makes like a diamond within a diamond forming out here, but watch this. Okay, folks, so you know these tricks. If I take these two blocks, the next ones that'll touch are gonna to be these sides here. So the easiest way to do it is our good old shell trick. Flip that around, shell game, right? And now you can see that there's that awesome star here within the star that is forming. So there's those two super cool elements that happen within this project. So if you want the star to be very apparent, of course, you're going to use a high contrast fabric. If you don't want it to be as apparent, you will do what I did, was talking about just doing, which is bringing in the same color or something maybe a little bit darker than the other one. So you're playing with your dark light tonal values, something very, very fun. And of course, machine quilting on these is kind of dealer's choice. You can do some real easy stitch in the ditch style stuff. You can use the fact that they're all the same size units to do some simple arc by arc quilting. Of course, you can quilt by check. Or like I was encouraging you, check out the Benertex website. This is Part of a really fun sew along program, charity style program. So you could also just donate your block and have it be part of a bigger loving project that goes out there. So I think that's pretty cool as well. That's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I think I'm gonna make them one and make these four for myself because I like this pretty cool. So at any rate, folks, I um, really hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Maybe you learned something new and fun on how to build these simple quilting blocks. Remember, all of these quilts are just built with really fun, easy foundational pieces 
pieces, half square triangles, rectangles, squares, that kind of thing. So very glad that you were here. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And until we see you again, please stay well. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. It really helps support our channel. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Hit the little button to be notified every time we go live or do a new video for all of you. And here's one from the past I think you'll really enjoy.